Livia Gita is a security and political risk analyst and the managing director of Global Strat Consultancy Firm. He joins us via Skype from London, and we appreciate your time. Obviously, you know, hindsight is 2020, but still, having said that, um, there seems to have been some missed opportunities uh, along the way. And then Emory was actually stopped at a routine check. They didn't even realize who he was. What is your assessment of what, what went wrong? Indeed. Uh, I mean, you point out the, the, the most blatant fact uh, about uh, Europeans' uh, mishaps when it comes to counterterrorism is that, as you mentioned, uh, it was just a routine. And uh, if it weren't for that uh, arrest at 3 a.m. in uh, Milan's uh, station, uh, he would still be free and possibly uh, meeting with accomplices and, and plotting other attacks. Uh, this has shed light on uh, many missed opportunities, uh, starting with uh, his illegal um, uh, appearance uh, on Italian soil. Uh, he wasn't deported at the time. Then after uh, torching uh, a school, he was jailed for four years. Uh, while Italians have been very strong in terms of uh, deporting illegals to the, the country of origin, uh, so that, that's one mishap. The, the second mishap was to let him travel to Germany and that the system within what's called the, the Schengen Accords uh, uh, borders uh, didn't work and the Germans had him under surveillance. Uh, there were numerous uh, warnings uh, of uh, him uh, on the verge of perpetrating an attack, especially from, from the Moroccan services. And, and that were uh, that were left uh, unanswered. Is it a, a case? I don't know. Maybe not the specific case, but it seems that <laughs> a lot of intelligence communities are overwhelmed with information. Is it a manpower issue? Uh, it is at first a manpower issue. You are totally correct. Uh, in, in, in terms of the numbers, uh, uh, please do keep in mind that in order to follow one potential. Uh, a terrorist, uh, you would need uh, between 20 and 30 officers around the clock. Uh, so when you're talking about numbers of potential terrorists in, in France, up to 15,000 uh, people, uh, you're talking about huge numbers that they don't have. The ratio in Belgium, for instance, is one police to one potential terrorist instead of those 20 or 30. So you're correct. Manpower, money are, are needed. But also, uh, laws need to be applied. I mean, if somebody uh, is illegal and uh, doesn't get deported, then the problem starts building up from there. And then uh, you have him, as a de facto citizen, being able to travel throughout Europe without ever being checked. And, and that's where the, the crucial point about those Schengen agreements are, are coming to light as a major... Uh, facilitator of, uh, of terror, if you will. So it, it sounds like you're saying that it's just a matter of some, some cases of enforcing the laws that are on the books. But having said that, there's still often pressure on politicians still to respond with, with more laws. Is that necessarily going to accomplish anything? Uh, if, if they don't apply them, it won't. And, that, and that's the problem. We've seen countries such uh, as France, which has one of the strongest counterterrorism laws. Uh, the problem that you hear from the security services is that uh, when they get the intel, when they arrest people, unfortunately, the judicial system uh, doesn't follow through. And that's why you have a huge tension between uh, the justice and the police, is that police feel that uh, just, justice is not following the, the laws and being as stringent as the laws allow them to be. Mr. Olivier Gita, thank you very much for your insight from London. We appreciate it. My pleasure.